I'm Travis Marion, and I'll be your host this evening. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'd like to call this meeting to order the Mayor and Board of Commissioners for January the 14th, 2020. Can I get the roll call, please? Yes, Mayor Marion. Here. Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner Bond. Here. Commissioner Pearson. Commissioner Warren. Here. Yes, Commissioner Pearson let us know that he did have uh, something personal he had to take care of this evening. Um, it happens to be, I believe, his wife and his anniversary. So they're going out to dinner this evening. So uh, happy anniversary to uh, Augie and his wife. I come to the town meetings for my anniversary. <laughs> Save it, Dave. I don't think it's the kind of thing. We rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I always, I always make it. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Will you bow your heads with me? Father God, I come to you tonight on behalf of our town. God, I ask that you watch over uh, our citizens, uh, watch over our police department, Lord, our fire and EMS, as well as our military. I ask that you watch over the elected body and their families, God, and uh, be with us as we're here this evening and as we leave here. Uh, later this evening in Jesus name amen all right citizens input would anyone like to speak this evening it's a bunch of crowd today wow. all right chief Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Board of Commissioners. I'm going to give you some numbers from uh, our last meeting, which was uh, December 17th until today. Um, we've made 10 criminal apprehensions, um, and ironically, they're for different things. It's not just drugs this time. It's a wide array of uh, criminal acts. Um, in addition, the officer stopped 53 vehicles. Uh, we did not have any major incidents during the Christmas holiday and the New Year's, you know, holiday, New Year's Eve uh, celebrations. Um, so things were relatively quiet. I'll knock on wood. Hopefully it remains that way. Uh, I did attend the governor's office uh, law enforcement <coughs> appreciation day um, with Governor Hogan and that was a great time. He vowed to continue to support law enforcement, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. Beyond that, there is nothing else for me to report, uh, unless there's questions. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Town Administrator. <clears throat> yeah, a couple items for you. The Aberdeen Proving Ground uh, Federal Credit Union will be opening up in about another week and a half or so. Um, the inside of the bank looks fantastic, the renovations that they're doing in there. Um, as you can see, the uh, car wash is moving along. It's really starting to look like something also. I've not talked to Mr. Temple um, since the holidays, but he had said before they were looking to open maybe the first or second week in February, um, the car wash itself. The new house that's being built on Walnut Street um, has already been sold. Um, the builder was able to sell it to um, someone. Um, they made some minor modifications on the inside, but that should probably be done probably in about another 30 days or so. Um, there's a lot of really cool things going on internally in Town Hall with uh, finances and um, scanning of documents. Um, we are really uh, continuing to make strides in bringing the town you know, up, up into the modern age of record keeping and uh, things along those, those na that nature. So the next couple of meetings, we're probably gonna have very full agendas with ordinances and resolutions that have to be passed um, related to some of these items, one being the record retention and uh, destroying records, town records that have already been scanned. 
So our next couple of meetings are going to be uh, probably packed with a lot of uh, business items to take care of. The other thing um, I wanted to do is um, the Bog Turtle Brewery is going to be opening up here in the next couple of weeks. They're in the final stages of their interior renovations, and I think the residents are really going to be happy with the way the inside of that place looks. Um, they have gone out of their way to keep it relatively looking the way the town used to look. Um, they have repurposed um, one of the original buildings that used to be there before Bud McFadden and Western Auto was a building called um, Haynes and Kirk Hardware, I believe was the name of it. And it was a totally different building that was torn down. And <coughs> Jeremy and the owners of Bog Total somehow got a hold of some of the big timbers that were in that original building and they have basically built some tables in there that are made out of big, heavy timbers from the original building. And they're looking to get some photogra photographs from that original building to put up on the wall. So it's really neat to see people who are investing in the town of Rising Sun are not trying to drastically change the town of Rising Sun. Yes, they're trying to bring new and exciting things to the town, but they're also trying to reach back into history and bring some of those items along. So that's, I think, uh, we should be very grateful to the type of investment that's coming in the Rising Sun that they want to do that. Um, there's another building that was re recently purchased. Um, that owner has not gone public yet on having bought the building, so it's not my place to say who it is now. But in discussions with them, they are looking to bring a lot of the old town charm uh, back to life on Main Street, while at the same time uh, bringing new and exciting services to the town. So as I was helping uh, Bog Total try to find some history, I realized that um, Brumfield's Barbershop used to be the home of um, the mid Mid-Atlantic Mid Journal, Midland Journal is what it was called. And I put a picture up here that you can see this over at Sun Pharmacy. Um, this is where uh, Brumfield's Barbershop is right now. That was like one of the only newspapers in Cecil County. So I thought it would be pretty interesting to try to see if I could ever mm -hmm. find a newspaper article that occurred on January 14th. And I found one from January 14th, 1898, in the town of Rising Sun. And I just wanted to read. It's so interesting to read these articles and realize how journalism has changed over the years and the way people write and the stories that they tell. And so this is from Friday, January 14th, 1898. Miners and locals, news about uh, the locals. Mary E. Abbott of Leslie has been granted a government pension of $8 per month. Government pension. The Honorable Jacob Tome, which uh, Jacob Tome Highway is named after, has been elected one of the directors of the Maryland School for the Blind in Baltimore. Miss <clears throat> J. A. Crow of East Nottingham, PA, sustained a fractured hip by a fall on the ice last week. D.W. Muse narrowly escaped losing a finger while feeding a fodder cutter at John Murdeth's second district. And a fodder cutter, I didn't know it until I just looked it up, is basically an old mechanical machine that you feed straw and hay into and, and grind it up. So he almost lost his finger. The other thing, Travis and I, the mayor and I were reading this, Working on the railroad was incredibly dangerous back then, and the newspaper is just filled with people that got killed or ran over by trains back in the day. Here was one titled, Killed by the Engine, George M. Jackson, aged 33 years, station agent at Charlestown on the PWB Railroad, was struck and instantly killed at 7 o'clock Tuesday night by an extra freight Trainmen of the extra freight stated that Jackson was standing on the northbound track while the southbound accommodation train was standing at the station. Jackson was horribly mangled. 
he leaves a widow. So I just got a kick out of how graphic they are in describing that he was horribly uh, mangled. The Rising Sun Bakery, under their proprietor Joseph Knopper, was advertising bread, rolls, cakes, pies, etc., of the best quality at prices consistent with the times, always on hand and furnished upon short notice. Large and small orders served with equal promptness and satisfaction given in all cases. Orders by mail will receive prompt attention. Um, comb and extracted honey from the Rising Sun Apiary is on sale in the stores of Rising Sun. It's put in mason jars at the Apiary. Nothing is so healing and soothing to the throat and lungs when inflamed by severe colds as well cured pure rich honey. This honey is ripened on the hives. It is of the very best quality. Dave, I was thinking of you when I was reading that. <laughs> so, um, songbirds. The destruction of songbirds or insect-eating birds to adorn ladies' hats and bonnets is a subject which is assuming a degree of importance that will soon, if not already, become a popular movement or subject of public opinion. The destruction of birds is a beastly passion, and when that of a, a variance is added to it, inspired by the vanity of fashion and owning birds, its proportions are so large that it threatens the material welfare of the nation. The destruction of birds is becoming a national question. One of the nonpartisan subjects that may safely be taken up is a movement to prohibit the shooting of all wild birds in the state of Maryland for the next three years. So they were considering that at that time. Um, public sale, I found this interesting. Public sale of Indiana horses. The subscriber will sell at a public sale at the stables of H.C. Cummings and Rising Sun on Thursday, January 20th, 1898. A carload of Indiana horses to include the drivers, workers, and all general purpose horses. So I guess the farm hands got sold at the same time of this auction. It goes on to say that Mr. Kingley, having held previous sales here, it is needless to say that these horses will be as represented and must give perfect satisfaction. They can be seen two days prior to the sale at the stables of H.C. Cummings and Rising Sun. A credit of $90 will be given, or 90 days will be given. We sell <laughs> rain or shine. Come and see a good lot of horses. Whether you want to stay or buy or not, it would be worth it to see these horses. Now, what was on the thought of everybody in Rising Sun? Everybody knows, or ought to know, is that the health and even life itself depends upon the condition of your blood. Feeding as it does all the organs of the body, it must be rich and pure in order to give proper nourishment. Hood's sassafarilla makes the blood pure, rich, and nourishing, and in this way strengthens the nerves, creates an appetite, <coughs> tones the stomach, and builds up the health. Hood's sassafarilla wards off colds, pneumonia, fevers, in which are prevalent at this time. And then in the world of sports, back in the day, a shooting match was held between Rising Sun, Aberdeen, and Darlington. The Rising Sun, Aberdeen, and Darlington gun clubs held a match at Rising Sun on Tuesday. The weather was very unfavorable for good shooting. Being rainy and foggy all day, the clubs shot for a purse of $30, which was won by Rising Sun. I the, the following is a list of the contestants and their scores. Alexander hit 20, missed 5. Clayton hit 21, missed 4. Gifford hit 15 and missed 10. Lex hit 19 and missed 6. Cather hit 15 and missed 10. Harsenstein hit 20 and missed 5. England hit 22 and missed 3. Kirk hit 19 and missed 6. The final score was Rising Sun 151, Aberdeen 134, and Darlington 106. I think it's really interesting that everybody... I guess you know who Alexander and Clayton is because they don't even put the last names in the paper. And if you didn't even live in Rising Sun, you knew who McCain, Dr. Kirk, and Star were in Darlington because they didn't put the last names down. 
So yeah. that's what happened. hundred. That's what was on the hearts and minds of Rising Sun 122 years ago. Do you know what the population was then of Rising Sun? Mm -hmm. It was Kirk. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the shooting contest was there. <laughs> England, Kurt. So I thought, you know, every once in a while, it, since the archives for this newspaper were very robust, I found a lot of articles in there. So maybe if we find any other meeting dates in the future, we can take a moment to look back in time of what was going on in the Rising Sun. That's all I have. And this has been 2020 with Calvin yeah, Potterberger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by. <laughs> Mayor's report is pretty brief this evening. Uh, four years ago, with the support of our Board of Commissioners, uh, we declared January support our police month. You can see the blue lights that shine out in front of Town Hall. Uh, we will be planning uh, something different than a breakfast this year, that we're going to go to the agencies and thank them directly. Uh, I'm working with our public safety commissioner and with the chief to get that done uh, sometime this month. But if you see a police officer out, whether it's Rising Sun PD, Cecil County Sheriff's, our state police, or any other agency, take a moment to say thank you uh, for what they do for us. Um, January 31st at 4 p.m. is the opening of Bog Turtle Brewery. Uh, it's going to be a great event. Myself and the board will be on hand with a few other uh, guests that we've invited from the state. Um, as Calvin spoke, uh, myself and Calvin have had about three meetings this week with them, uh, did walkthroughs with them. It's, it's a beautiful, um, what they've been able to turn that building into. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and we're excited uh, for them to join Main Street. Um, Cecil Knight in Annapolis was this past week. Myself on the board went. Uh, it was a great evening. Uh, we spent a lot of time networking with our state delegation. Uh, obviously, the session has started in Annapolis, uh, and we will be working with them um, and bringing up things that we think will be of use uh, for the Rising Sun area. Um, that concludes my report. Last but not least, we do have Trenton here. Trenton is a, a scout from Troop 28. Uh, we love having our scouts here, uh, so thanks for coming this evening. Uh, Commissioner Rothenry. Um Just a couple of things. Um, Calvin's already mentioned Clean Enterprises uh, car wash. We hope to see opening soon, just in time to wash the salt off the, the snow. You know, it's here it is the middle of January, and we just had 60-some degree weather, but that's not going to last much longer. So if you haven't winterized your home yet, your outside garden hoses and stuff, take care of that. Um, we're going to get that winter weather pretty soon. Once the snow starts falling, Make sure you got a brand new snow shovel because something seems to happen to them every year and they sell out. And, and be mindful of your neighbors when you're shoveling. You know, keep the sidewalk clear. Help out people that you can. Our public works department will be out there. They do a great job of plowing the snow. And it, sometimes it can be tough for them. I, the street I live on is a cul-de-sac and there's not a lot of place places for them to put snow except in Commissioner Warnick's driveway or somebody else's and then they always seem to come back you know and if you get plowed in call and, and, and speak to town hall you don't have to call and be rude and ignorant we know it happens and let us know and they'll come back and hit the area and, and sometimes you know we're always wondering when we're going to get that next big one again so just be prepared um, it's you know January 14th we're going to get some you know it's going to happen they're calling for a little bit this this week we got a little taste of it last week uh, that was a friendly snow as I like to call them made everything pretty so uh, just be prepared be mindful of your neighbors and, and the sidewalks and streets um, that, that's all I got tonight uh, it's been a long time since we've met the last time and we've been doing a lot and the other night at Cecil night was a good night in Annapolis a lot of new faces down there and we we went down and Made sure they knew we were up here and uh, what we needed. So that's all I have tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Rothenreath. Commissioner Braun. The paving that was being done on Walnut Street was discontinued during the holidays. At this point, we are waiting on a day to day basis to coordinate the availability of equipment with good weather in order to complete that paving. And I just wanted to let everybody know, because I'm sure they were wondering why it was not quite complete. 
Thank you, Commissioner Braun. Commissioner Warnick. Um, we had a project finish at uh, Veterans Park by uh, Jacob Benningfield, and uh, he'll be in uh, one of the upcoming meetings with his presentation on his project. So um, uh, at this point, we just have some trails to complete and such, and I think we're Veterans Park is, uh, I mean, other than some maintenance stuff and, and, you know, at some point, hopefully bathrooms and such, um, you know, we're, we're kind of, I think, done building bridges and boardwalks over, at least in Veterans Park. Um, to answer the question posed earlier, the population in Rising Sun in the year 1900 was 382, and uh, in 1890 it was 384, so we can assume it was pretty much in between 382 and 384 in uh, 1898. Um, I guess it was the one guy who got hit by the train that <laughs> brought the numbers down. <laughs> 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 So, and actually, interestingly, that looks like, I don't know, there's, there's only one other decade where there was population decline in Rising Sun, and that was from 1930 to 1940. Um, but uh, the town has grown pretty uh, consistently since the 1930s um, at 20% or, or so, until 20, 2000 to 2010, where it grew 63%. So, um, and uh, with that, I think that is all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Warnick. Upcoming meetings. Uh, the Planning Commission will meet on Tuesday, January 21st at 6.30 p.m. Our next town meeting will be Tuesday, January the 28th, again at 7 p.m. Uh, town Hall will be closed on the upcoming holidays of Martin Luther King Day, which is Monday, January the 20th, and then President's Day, which is in February, February 17th. Is there any more business to come before the board this evening? Hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.